I'll leave in the morning, head to the coast. I hope you made it, sir. You didn't make it. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name's Steps Basic, and welcome back to the Dreadax Collection. Now we are playing... Excuse me. Now we're playing Shatter. You're not supposed to interrupt me there, game. Anyway, Shatter, I don't know who the devs are. Um, I'm starting to feel like I was wrong. I don't think Papa Combo is actually in this, unless they are Scythe Dev Team. Because I, I recognize Scythe Dev Team, but I don't think I'm correct in that. Maybe. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to stop saying who I know is in this, because I'm probably wrong on all accounts. Anyway, so, uh, Shatter. In the ruins of future Britain, new gods rule the wastes. Last to move, shift to sprint, left click to interact. Roger, dodger, coo, coo, coo. All right, get out, get out, get out, get going. When two previously unconnected groups meet, there is always a period of incompatibility. Uh-huh. Now, on the micro scale, this just means some awkward handshakes and uncomfortable laughter. <laughs> on a grand scale, it can mean the decimation of one of the groups due to disease, technological superiority, cultural assimilation, etc. However, we typically only view these interactions within the scope of our own species. When encountering less advanced life forms, the extinction can be swift and entirely unintentional. Indeed, more species have been eliminated by sheer carelessness than were ever purged as part of the plan. Now take that knowledge and apply it in the other direction. If we came into contact with a species far more advanced than us, they might not even notice us, and we might not notice them. We envision an alien invasion as gigantic ships in the sky raining down some kind of weaponized energy. In reality, it is unlikely we would have the capacity to even fathom in what form these higher beings would come. Do you really think a cat is aware of the nature of a car before it is ground into the pavement? Aware of the nature of the car? No, but aware of the car? Yes. That's the problem with this sort of thing. You know, I very much like the idea of uh, a higher form of alien life coming to visit and and not being ne necessarily nefarious, but unintentionally destructive, as it were. You know, put a toddler in a room full of uh, stacked bricks, those bricks aren't going to stay up for very long. And the toddler's not really going to understand what happened. It just bumped into everything. And and the idea that we would not be aware of what squished us or vice versa. Because the car itself, not being the sentient one, the person driving would be very well aware of having encountered the cat in a very unfortunate meeting. Also, cultural assimilation doesn't necessitate the destruction of the other group as it were rather you might say that neither group survives and both being forever changed have become one anyway we're gonna be getting into philosophical debates with a horror game <laughs> anyway so shatter let's see what this one's about i know it's about aliens maybe or at least an advanced civilization Unity. Oh, it's got spookers. Look at the sides there. It's all spookers. <laughs> These guys are cool looking. I love the color scheme. It has nothing to do with it being my regular color scheme. Alright, let's get into this and see what it's like. This one. Praise Morrigan. So we're in the fall of Britain. That's a bad. Mm. I have a sprint bar. And a life bar. At least I don't have to toilet. Don't have a weapon though. Nice gas mask. I was kind of hoping I would have a weapon. It's a church. Why is the church all glowy? Are one of those bugs in there? Oh no, somebody watching TV. Cool. Hey buddy. Well, this is a surprise. 
New faces are rare enough, but it looks like you've got all got no neurals. None at all. You know the gods rule everything outside London, right? Without neural access, you'll be dead before morning. Help them? You gotta be crazy, this one. Tell you what, down the hill there's a town. Uh, if you can even call it that. If you find any neurals there, I'll configure them for you. But just so we're clear, you'll owe me. Cool. I'm sorry you have such a manly voice, ma'am. Oh, I'm not connected. Can I access the television? No. Can I access the phones? That's not a phone, that's a power box. Alright. Get me into the neural, sir. Ma'am. Flashlight? <laughs> a simple torch. Press E to turn on and off. Like most tech in Britain, this is a battered old thing. Clearly repaired by many different hands over the years. Cool. Don't really need a flashlight at the moment. Be careful. Radiation. Nerd. Oh, gas mask. Okay. Okay. Say the old gods, huh? Hey, buddy. Without the Morgan, we'd all be dead. The government doesn't give two shites about us. These are hard times. These are so, there's so much bioterrorism floating around. Without the fine non-attack, our crops would fail and we'd starve. We didn't die from some hacker's virus first. But I'm not connected, so I can't die from some hacker's hacking thing. Yay, no fall damage. Now, well, color me intrigued. There's one heck of a weird walkway. What's over here? I can jump. Hopefully that doesn't mean parkour for me. Hello, friend. Our town's been loyal to the Morgan since the world winter. We help nurture the, its fairy larva to maturity. In return, we're given some of the most useful biotech in Britain. We're li willing to trade some if you've got larva. You can find it all over the place, but only if you're connected to the network. Larva isn't just really just is really just data after all. I'ma take it. Eh, I don't have larva. All right, so I have to get connected to the. Uh, gotta get connected to the thing. That's some some slapping music they got going on here. Isn't that the phrase the kids use these days? The music slaps. Well, that was a waste of time. Okay, so now for the true test. Is there fall? Oh, I can't even jump off. Now for the true test. Is there fall damage? No. Mm, fall damage? No. Mm, fall damage? No. Fall mm, damage? No. It's not even going to let me try. Brit. There's another house up there we can go check out. My run juice is depleted. But that's okay. I can continue to make my way up. Is that the neuro implant I'm looking for? It could be. It could help and I can learn. Become one with nature. Or unnature. However you want to look at it. Neural implant. To install this, take this to the girl in the ruined church. The neural implant is a vital of is vi vial of hormones, enzymes, and nano robotics. It can modify a person's brain chemistry to access the augmented reality network. Britain is a backwater country with a woefully inadequate network infrastructure. Rogue AIs wander the digital realm, largely unchecked by the government. So I'm safe until I do that. I thought my escape from London would be euphoric. For thirty years I've toiled in a dreary hack, following the loudspeaker orders during my tyranny. They said the countryside was nearly decontaminated, that we could move back to a paradise of the green rolling hills, but this place is a wasteland. The local town, if you can call a cluster of crumbling brick walls a town, were kind at least. They gave me some biotech, which I'm obviously not going to use, some pagan nonsense about gods. If I could get out of the country, make it to Nigeria, to Abu, Abuja or Lagos, I'll leave in the morning, head to the coast. 
I hope you made it, sir. You didn't make it. Well, you tried at least. My bad. Hey, lady, I got that nanotech thing you wanted. Well, looks like you found a neuroinjector. The right hormone config will get you on the grid. Wrong one. Break your brain. So give it here and stay effing still. Unless you want a mental capacity of a turnip. I don't know. Turnips are pretty smart. Maybe I could be a turnip. Your brain has been configured to access the augmented reality network. In the metropolises of Abuwa or Tokyo and Tokyo, this would mean a world of seamless capitalist integration. But in backward backwater Britain, outdated network infrastructure is ruled by rogue AIs, worshipped as gods. And there, done. If you see any weird stuff like giant pink insects and stuff, don't worry. They're just our AI overlords. Oh, winky face. This better be worth it. Thanks, lady. Whoa. Okay, there's a lot of giant pink insects. Do you want to save the game? Sure. The game has been saved. Hello. You're cute. Oh my god, they're so huge. <laughs> Rogue AI. Larva. A premature form of fairy often traded as currency. To create its successor, a fairy will coalesce raw network data into larvae. Fairy applications are loyal to a certain god, executing commands as needed. They also display fondness of humans, and they've nurtured in society, so their larvae is valuable. Cool. I got a larva. I got a larva. I got a larva. Hey, 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 hey. I do that, do got me a larva. I got me a larva. I gotta go up there. Check out the dead guy's house again. I was kind of hoping he was hiding a, a larva in here, but nope, apparently not. Let's go check out Mama Bug up here. Hi, guys. How y'all doing? So when do I have to start killing the big bugs? Oh. This is a little nerve-wracking. Primate, your presence was predicted by Bridget and her division algorithms. Divination algorithms. You are a vertebrate of a special interest to us. Your arrival coincides with the birth of a divine pupa, a new god. Coincidence is statistically irrelevant, though we admit curiosity for such irregularities. A test. We ask this primate to locate the divine pupa in the other world and return it to us. Our servants left you a key. You will need it. Well, thanks, Big Bug Mama. Is that the key? Cool. Rusted key, an old uh, an old key to a nearby ruin. As Britain's wealth declined, so did its population, succumbing to genetically engineered diseases, starvation, or migration. Many old buildings were sealed up to rot. Cool. All right, so I'm assuming this would be the place I need to be. One must find the pupae. Hey, buddy. Door has been unlocked. I could use a weapon or something. Hey, guys. How you doing? You want to get through, speak to the corporal. Okay, hold it right there. This is government checkpoint. You're too thick to know what that means. It means F off. Unless, of course, you face giving this corporal something they can spend back in London, eh? None of this live ain't poop. Real money or F off. Alrighty, corporal. Hey, bugs. Get him! Ha 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 You guys suck. So larvae is not nearly as uh, abundant as I was led to believe. Hey bugs, how you guys doing? Some bugs in the system. Huh, is that a picture? 
Oh, it's old money. Paper currency bearing the insignia of an ancient dead empire. For those trapped under government rule in London, this is the only current, only accepted currency. Though there is little to spend it on, as luxury goods from Asia or Africa rarely are rarely imported. Right, I forgot. Joseph is sick. He's delirious with fever and his skin bloats with strange boils that twist into a spiral pattern and, un and bloom into vibrant colors. This is no natural disease. Tiny specks from the letters JJ on his neck must be, be his calling card of the effer who engineered it. Rude. We've hated, we've abided by government regulations all the time. We give the soldiers their tithe, plus whatever else they ask, ask for, but still, they won't give us medicine. Tomorrow I'm taking Joseph to the Morgan. I won't call that thing a god, it's just data. But so is our DNA, so is the virus. It's our last hope. Hmm. Well, I hope it worked out for you. Okay, good. I'm going to say that and then turn around and find another corpse on the ground. Well, I got some paper money. Corporal! I don't think so. Is that another larva? It is. It's another larva. Sweet. Now I have two. <laughs> two of the six I need. Oi, Corporal. Got some kizash money for you. Yeah, he's stuff. Still even smells of coke. A man of my word. We'll, uh, we'll let you pass through. Go on, dead piece off. Alright, thanks, Corporal. Blow it out your butt. Stoop. I must find this divine pupae. Zarate's. Uh... Oh, very larva. Hey, bird. Another phone box. Uh, I've decided I want to go back and save and also see about getting that, that larva. Yes, please. So the Morrigan wants you to cover a divine pupa. <laughs> Some joke. All right. You'll never make it back from the other world. Most folk avoid it like the plague. But if you're bad enough to try, I've detected some weird signals coming from the ruins atop that hill. Could be another world access point. Oh, if you're attacked by hostile software in the other world, you'll be booted out. And the people will start to die, so, uh, be careful. Sure, thanks, buddy. Never thought you cared. Alright, moving our way up the hill then. So far, I'm digging the atmosphere of the game, but the genre doesn't feel very horror. Horror. Feels very sci-fi, as opposed to horror. Which is unfortunate, but don't get me wrong. Not like I don't like sci-fi. In fact, I very much like sci-fi. Okay, well, that'd be the, uh... Entry point to the other world they were talking about. Ugh. I said those pokers. I like the pokers. Okay, so no fall damage, yay. Nice. And we have a shortcut. <laughs> Sweet. That's pretty epic, though. Got a shortcut, fell off a cliff, got another larva. Ah, one more, no, two more larvae, and I'll have enough for that upgrade thing. Let me circumnavigate this building, make sure there's nothing lurking on the other side. <laughs> I can see that Morgan for miles, but no, no. Nothing around the building. So in we go. <sighs> okay. The music amped up and we got a little bit more horror atmosphere to it. 
one thing people fairly rec real realize is just how powerful an atmosphere can be to a game. It can make or break your game if you ain't paying attention to it. Of course, I don't like it. It's getting loud. Thank you. Keep trying to push E to uh, open doors, but it's it's clicking this one. Hello, pupa or larva. Yeah, five of them. Okay, cool. I haven't had any real need for the flashlight yet, which isn't so much of a bad thing, but I feel like they're gonna hit me with some darkness. What'd you think? They're gonna hit me with some darkness? Cool. Oh boy. Hi. Shouldn't lurk around like that, buddy. What the heck? Uh, chrysalis of a god, bring this to the Morrigan without leaving the other world. While most larvae will undergo metamorphosis into a fairy, in exceptional circumstances a god is formed. The pupa, hungry for data, consumes an obscene amount of network resources. For this reason, it can only exist in the other world, an imperfect simulation of reality. Okay, so I'm gonna have to make my way across the freaking plains of death. I hope that door is still open, that shortcut door is still open, because I don't want to go across the big plains. Thank goodness for the enemy's propensity to babble. Janime. Okay, we're doing good, we're doing good. My friend is in here. Oh no, my friend. You need a sandwich, you're nothing but skin and bones. Shoot. Don't get too close. I don't even know if those guys are going to be hostile towards me or not. I just don't like the looks of them. I have made it. A 
up we go. Hey, Morgan. I brought the baby. The primate has retrieved the divine pupa. Normally, a fairy would retrieve such a precious entity. I was mocked by the other gods for sending a primate. Yet you succeed without being slain. You are a noteworthy vertebrate. The divine pupa you brought will soon mature. It would likely become a minor deity, little more than a fairy. But a single anomalous simulation predicted something exceptional. A near omnipotent god that could reshape Britain as it was wished. And as, a young go as young gods possess irrational affection for those who have helped them, this would make you a vertebrate of exceptional significance. This interaction has provided us with much data, Primate. But now it is time for you to leave. It is exceeding prob exceedingly probable we will meet again. Lovely hell place. I want more of that game. Good job, lovely hell place. That was epic. Very interesting. James Rag, you did a good job. Oh, stretching everything. Oh, I was tense like the whole time. <laughs> I have to stretch out now. But golly, I want some more of that. That was pretty cool. I love the atmosphere. I love the idea behind it. Dread X Collection Team, the haunted PS1 community, including you two uh, for their tech. Yeah, <laughs> I want more lore and I want everything. Like, I'm, oh, this this needs a this needs a, a, an upgrade, a huge upgrade of awesomeness, just more expansive. There you go. Ah, but there you go. That is Shatter. Yes, please. That is Shatter. Wicked cool, great idea, fun, interesting, a little spooky at times, and I was I was just. Urgh, tense the whole time. <laughs> but anyway, apart from all that, that's going to be it for me for today. Thank you all so much for joining me for this episode of the Dread X Collection Shatter. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you did, please go and poke that like button for me. If you'd like to see more from me, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And of course, as always, you're more than welcome to leave a comment down in the comment section down below. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. When I can, if I can. You know all that jazz. And tune in next time. As we go on to Scythe Dev Team and their Carthonk. Anyway. And until then, good night. <laughs>